You know, the women were such a support to one another. They would come to Santa Mujeres de la Esperanza, and sometimes very hesitantly because they didn't know what it was all about. And then they'd find other women that were in exactly the same situation, and they would be such a support to one another. And that was the great strength of Santa Mujeres de la Esperanza. And of, of the neighborhoods, too, in, at the border. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to tell you about one of these women now. Margarita was a regular uh, at our, in our classes. We had a class called Valores y Vida to help women know that they had a voice. They decided what we should talk about most of the time because we wanted them to hear their own voices and make their own decisions and have a little influence. So Margarita uh, was a, just a very, very good mother and a very good wife. And she had a very good husband with a job, but he did not have documents. And I don't think she did either, but he was found out on the job. He was an accountant, he was bilingual, and he was deported. So that left her with the children. Her older son was a very, very bright boy in high school, the only one in the family who was uh, you know, not documented. All the rest had been born here. And he had a chance to go to the Capitol for a, a, a senior project because of his his rating in his school. He was uh -huh. a very good student. He couldn't go because he didn't have a social security number. It's stories like that that just uh, keep you walking with people, encouraging them. Margarita is still there and uh, her kids are more or less grown up, but and her husband was never allowed to come back. Whether she's been able to go across or not to see him, I don't know. Um, so. Another case was, uh, I was at Mass at, our, at San Antonio Parish where we went for daily Mass. And at the end of the Mass, Father said, now instead of praying for vocations, we're going to bless these two young men. He said they were outside all night long in the cold. And uh, Mr. whatever brought them in to keep warm and they're with us at Mass this morning. So we're going to bless them and send them on their way. It turns out that the two of them had crossed over the night before and uh, were looking f to go to their brothers in Houston. So uh, after the blessing at Mass, and the Mass was over, just a little group of us every, every morning, uh, many, many people wanted to give them money. One man just kept insisting on giving them a job. And Father finally came out of the sacristy and said, no, let Sister take them. Let Sister take them to a safe house, which is Annunciation House for immigrants and refugees. So I, uh, they got in the car, and they were blood brothers. And uh, they showed me where their coyote had left them off on the street, and uh, about maybe a mile and a half from the church. And they looked for a church because so many uh, places of worship are welcoming to them. And they feel safe. So uh, I, when I took them down to uh, Annunciation House, I think it's interesting because people will say, well, you did something illegal. And I say, of course, but there's a higher law. There's the law of God that says you love your neighbor. But anyway, I took them down there. And uh, whether they ever got off to their brother in Houston, whether they got deported, I don't know. We never could follow up on many of them. But I was so impressed because one of the ladies who was at that mass and didn't have any money on her came all the way down. I worked in another house that belongs to Annunciation House. She looked for me. She gave me money to give to them so that they could further their journey. So there's so many good people here trying, trying to help.